Welcome to the mind of Lance Skurve, the most creatively profound man in cyberspace. All right, Mr. Car- Mr. Uh, Simpson, would you please stand and face the jury? This is Robertson. Superior Court of California, County of Los Angeles, in the matter of the people of the state of California versus Orenthal James Simpson, case number BA097211. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant or job. Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder in violation of Penal Code Section 187A, a felony upon Nicole Brown Simpson, a human being, as charged in count one of the information. Superior Court of the State of California, County of Los Angeles, in the matter of the people of the State of California versus Orenthal James Simpson. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant Orenthal. Val James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder in violation of Penal Code Section 187A, a felony upon Ronald Lyle Goldman, a human being, as charged in count two of the information. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Lance Skurve. First of all, I have to say, rest in peace, O.J. Simpson. And as always, we send our condolences to the family and friends of those who are close to him. I know that this happening is a long handled spoon in a very deep glass of emotion, especially those in America, especially those can remember that particular time and they can almost remember exactly where they were. I remember where I was. I was driving for a living and I know the particular street that I had my passengers on because we were listening very intently to the radio. Those moments are just like the moments, unfortunately, when 911 happened, the World Trade Center attacks, September 11th, 2001, they're embedded, they're, they're, how can I put it? It's just like when you brand a cow to ascertain possession when he slips off the pasture. These things are branded in our brains and these happenings oftentimes at the point of transition, when we leave this earth, They flash in our minds, as well as our own personal events. But these events have become very, very personal. Thank you so much, Sister Gifty, and welcome, Sister Gifty, and Fetty, and Yvonne, and all of those who are across different social media platforms listening to this. This just happened, well, actually, yesterday, that O.J. Simpson transitioned. <clears throat> I'm just getting over cold. Bear with me. Let me read a few facts so we don't get these things crossed up. And we're going to go deep for as long as this lasts. And if for some reason the electronics cut off or the power blinks, bear with me and stay here. I will be right back. O.J. Simpson, who became one of the most infamous figures in the U.S. during his murder trial in the 90s has died after a cancer battle. The former NFL star died Wednesday in Las Vegas. His family confirmed he was 76. 76 years old. You know, we feel as though many, whether we like them or not, of our, okay, hold on one second. I almost did it to myself. Let me just make sure these buttons are working. Okay. We, we think they're invincible, whether we like them or not. Because when we see someone who is so prominent in our time or infamous and they transition, we start to look and play the number game. 76. I just turned 71. Uh, excuse me. 61 this past Monday. So it's a 15 year difference. So we start to play these games. On April 10th, our father, Orenthal James Simpson, succumbed to his battle with 
the family wrote on X, formerly Twitter, on Thursday. He was surrounded by his children and grandchildren. During this time of transition, his family asked that you please respect their wishes for privacy and grace, the brief statement added. Simpson's murder trial after the death of his wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, captivated the nation in the 90s. And I think that that's an understatement. Simpson won the Heisman Trophy as a star running back for the University of Southern California Trojans. We're going through this. We're going to go deep now. Bear with me. The running back had been receiving treatment in Sin City after a prostate cancer diagnosis. Simpson is survived by four of his children from his two marriages, including the two youngest, Sidney and Justin, that he shared with Brown. One of Simpson's sons from his first marriage drowned, unfortunately, in 1979. Simpson played 10 years in the NFL, after which he parlayed his MVP status into an acting career while his star continued to rise. However, Simpson's home life was far from cheerful. After divorcing his first wife in 1979, he married waitress Nicole Brown, who later accused him of vicious spousal abuse that included verbal taunts and physical beatings. The couple divorced in 1992. Two years later, on June 12, 1994, Nicole Brown and her friend, Ron Goldman, were found stabbed to death outside her Brentwood home. Simpson was arrested for the killings a few days later following a slow-speed car chase in his white Ford Bronco. Simpson's murder trial the following year was a tabloid and media sensation as the former football star's dream team of high-profile lawyers tried to refute a seemingly damning stack of evidence. In addition to courtroom bulldogs Robert Shapiro and Johnny Cochran, the dream team included Robert Kardashian, whose daughter Kim later parlayed her own sex tape infamy into a reality television empire. The case was a humiliating loss for prosecutors Marcia Clark and Christopher Darden, who were expected to net a conviction for the struggling Los Angeles DA's office. Despite avoiding criminal charges, Simpson was ordered to pay the families of Brown and Goldman over $33 million in civil proceedings for wrongful death and battery. Simpson's Heisman Trophy was auctioned off to drum up cash, People Magazine reported, at the time. The award and other belongings raked in almost half a million dollars, which went to the Goldman family, the outlet said. Just two months before his death, Simpson was pictured looking frail, but assured the public he was in good health in a brief social media video. The six foot one former athlete was also sparked health concerns when he was seen limping while out in Los Angeles in November. Simpson struggled in the years following his acquittal. In addition to auctioning off the spoils of his previous careers, he struggled to pay taxes and defaulted on the mortgage on his longtime home. His attempts to make money off of books and TV interviews surrounding the murders were also squashed in court following outcry from the victim's families. Goldman's family famously won the rights to Simpson's manuscript about the case, which was titled, If I Did It. It helped me to get out of debt and secure my homestead, Simpson told the Associated Press at the time. 880000 advance he got for the book. It's all blood money. And unfortunately, I had to join the jackals, he added. When the book hit shelves, the Goldmans retitled it, If I Did It, Confessions of a Killer, and put the it in a very small font. Simpson was also arrested multiple times, including in connection with an armed robbery in a Las Vegas hotel room in 2007. Simpson spent nine years behind bars on armed robbery and other felony charges, 
though he insisted that the videotape confrontation was simply him trying to retrieve memorabilia that was rightfully his. Simpson's parole ended in 2021. In recent years, he made occasional appearances on social media, including a bizarre video he shared last year about convicted wife killer Alex Murdoch. We can go on longer and longer with this, but you can go to landscurve.com. On YouTube, it's posted up top the link that you can go to to post your comments because on YouTube, the comments are disabled. And I also have a hand-drawn illustration on that particular site on this particular case that I did many years ago that I find quite comical that you can only see there from yours truly. Now, let's get down to it. Let's get down to business. Like I said in the title here, OJ's dead, but is America's venom still alive? On the bottom of that, I said OJ Simpson is now the nation's official litmus test of racism. See, when this happened, it touched a very, very deep nerve indeed. You know, America can present itself in the media as being a Christian nation. It could paint itself as being a righteous nation, a God-fearing nation, a nation that although it may have in their minimized way of saying it, a past that they're not proud of, but look at us now. Also, we have to understand that while America, they claim is a melting pot, that there are some who rule over more than others. There are some who gain justice more than others. And that has been the norm. Now, this is a very touchy subject. And why I said, but is America's venom still alive? I want you to remember me asking this question because in the days to come, and we don't even have to wait that long, even today, go on the different social media platforms and let's see if America lives up to what it claims to be as far as being a just nation. Because back then in 1995, so many years ago, the responses, the reactions, it was a full range thing. Now, for anyone listening to this who may not look like me, I'm not going to be angry with you by the way you felt. But why did it have to be so explosive? Why were so many people so explosive at the reaction? When we have other court cases that don't go the way that they think it should go or it goes the way where it doesn't favor us, but nobody opens their mouth. And when I say favor us, look at the photo of me there, Lance Gerv, you know exactly what I mean. I'm not trying to be inflammatory tonight. I just want to be factual about the psyche in the dysfunction of a country who is basically a shape-shifting nation. Now, what happens after this particular point on social media is up to you. Because I am so happy, I'm very happy that we didn't have social media in 1995 like we do now in 2024. You see, because if we did, the Internet would explode because there was a lot of hate. Now, if you really felt that he did this, if you really felt that he did, I have no problem with you. You're going to feel the way you feel. If you feel that he didn't do it, I have no problem with you. I'm here to host a discussion in this monologue, and eventually, if anybody wants to come on in, I'll drop the link so you can air your opinion on YouTube, on Rumble, on X, on LinkedIn, on Twitch, also on Instagram. We are. Although you may not see that link on Instagram, you may have to swing around the YouTube or Rumble. 
But on landscurve.com, you'll have the link. And we're going to have a deep discussion there. And I'm not going to censor anybody at all in the comments section. This can go on and on and on. Say what you want. You can cuss me out for, look, because you're not in my face saying it. <laughs> we have a lot of keyboard warriors out here in social media. And my, th my skin is very thick because of it. I don't have thin skin, okay? Anyway, why did it explode this way? See, I'm going to say a few things that you may disagree with, just as you may say things that I disagree with, but you have to take it because I'm quite sure you have your big girl panties on and your big boy drawers on. America. And when I say America, I'm not really referring to those who have had the heels of the oppressor in the neck. I'm talking about those who have ruled. Those who ruled and have gotten away with literal, actual murder. Now, some people are going to say, oh, yeah, bring it up race. What, what do you think this is all about? This messed with the psyche. That has been the foundation of America. See, when OJ was running through airports and he got the Heisman Trophy, you see, football in most team sports, there's a psychological factor that many of us don't realize or even acknowledge. And what's that? When you look at the players on the field, when you look at the owners and the CEOs over these teams, they look quite different than those who are out on the field playing. And who's making the most money? It's not the players. I don't care how many millions of dollars they say these players made. Those who are up in the stands who can't even hardly walk up in the stands that are getting much older, clap for their boys who are on the field playing, whether it's basketball, football, oftentimes boxing, most other sports. It's not us in those positions of power to make the majority of the money. It has often been said that there's a direct correlation between modern day team sports and the plantation slavery is it any different except that you have a well paid slave so many without consciously thinking this this is the order and so those who rule I'm I'm not saying every person who doesn't look like me rules because there's a lot of people who don't make a lot of money who are suffering and being crushed under the system. All colors and all races, we understand that. But when it's business as usual, many of these people don't tend to think any different. They're getting paid. They're making lots of money. And our boys, and I say that that way for a reason, on the field, they are getting their crumbs, which may not look like crumbs to the working class, middle class people like you and I, most of us. So now they've allowed OJ into their world. It's a conditional membership into a club that if you make the wrong step, this is the unwritten rule, you're kicked out and disgraced for minor infractions. You see, because when you have potential in team sports and you're talented, you, you will see that it's not always that we're with one who looks like us and or eventually someone else comes along. And like Dr. Umar Johnson so beautifully said, when those athletes die or when those athletes go bankrupt, from foolish spending, or they may not be bankrupt. They go through a divorce. Who gets the money? When they have children with these women that look like Nicole Brown Simpson, who gets the money? 
That's usually how it goes. I didn't know that she was a waitress. Now, being a waitress is no uh, bad thing. All gainful employment is righteous because we can always go up. But I see this even with, with the Tiger Woods situation. I see this with many situations and why I charge many athletes like OJ with having their brains scrambled. When you get that money, you get with somebody who looks like you, who has the same background as you. This new world that you're introduced into is to suck you dry. And I mean that on all levels. So they bring this woman. I don't know how they actually met, but this is how it goes. You, you, you're making money now. You, you're doing commercials now. You got the Heisman Trophy. You, you're doing movies. People love you. Everyone loves you. There is no way that an O.J. Simpson can, could have grown up in America and not taste the sting of racism. Most of us know it. There are some of us who deny it and make excuses, but most of us know what it tastes like, and it doesn't taste good. Many of us who had parents who raised them up to understand what this is and prepare them for when it happens can thank their parents because we knew the deal before. And some of us know. But eventually, like Paul Mooney said, I will say the word ninja. I don't want to say the other word, but you know exactly what I'm saying. You get your ninja wake up call. I'm, I'm setting the foundation for something. Now, bear with me. We ain't going to be here all night. But before you get your ninja wake up call, you feel accepted. You feel loved. You don't feel that sting anymore of racism. Maybe it's there, but you kind of ignore it, but you pull it out of your mind because you got that new promotion on the job. And now you're a little higher. Maybe a supervisory position, maybe an administrative position. See, this thing affects us across the board. This is why we took this situation with the trial and the murder so seriously. Because it jolted us. It jolted us into reality, some of us. It jolted us away from the facade. And it made many of us see the ugliness of our own ways and how America thought. That's why I ask in the title, but is America's venom still alive? Is it still alive? Now, come on. This is just like when you're taking a state exam, you studied, and the person doing the review who taught you and took you through all of the curriculum say, you might want to remember this question on the test. They're telling you that it's going to be there. So when I say, but is America's venom still alive? Do I have to ask that question? It appears that America is a nurse. I don't care how many young black boys get to kiss a white girl and say, no, she's my girlfriend and, and racism doesn't exist. Worse, if he if she performs certain acts on him while his toes are curling, he is saying, y'all are crazy. There is no racism. <laughs> and you know exactly what I mean. The bottom line is. America has a psyche that's burnt and, 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 and brazed in stone, branded in stone. And I don't think America could ever get over its sickness. Everything was hunky-dory with OJ, so he thought. This is not to say whether he did or didn't. I'm just speaking about the explosiveness and the litmus test that is starting at this very moment. As you look at the comments, as you look at the articles written, 
it's going to stir up like that dusty room that never got clean. You know, we got an extra room in the attic or the basement. And we've been so busy working overtime. We've cleaned everywhere else, but we never got into that room. So when we finally went into a room that didn't look dusty because the dust had settled, when we start to sweeping and wiping and opening up the window, we start <coughs> because we see what's really there. Is this a dusty room now, America, that hasn't been visited in a while to really stir things up? Know how to be politically correct? They know how to be politically correct and not say certain things because they might get a lawsuit on the job or get fired. They know how to tread lightly. But every now and then we have this word called Karen. That's out. They know what they speak about at their dinner tables. It's a generational thing that has been going on ever since we came to these and it hasn't changed. I'm not going to say everybody is saturated with the same level of this thing, but it's not my job to figure it out. It's my job to live life, pursue liberty and happiness, but see, even in that being innocent, I'm saying me as a black man, I'm all and it is guilty until proven innocent. When the statistics don't even show that at 13 or 14 percent of the population, we are not committing crimes, the mass shootings, the crazy out of control things. Yes, we may have some in the so-called hood that may do what they do because they're hungry or want extra money because they don't have the opportunities. And I'm not making any excuse for anyone who does a crime now. Give them the time that they've earned because there's enough information out here for you to know better. So don't think that I'm going to give you a pass because you're black. But I'm not going to look the other way because you're something else either. And I'm going to call it like I see it, like I always do. See, whenever there's that Negro that's allowed to come over for dinner with the white daughter, it's conditional. And you better know that you better walk on angels. You got to do everything perfect. You better not display any negroid traits you better have money you better be what is the word that president, former president barack obama said you better be articulate but why should they use that word on us most of us are most of us are more articulate than any other people out there there are some that didn't pay attention in class but we are painted a certain way we are painted as the thug. We are painted as the criminal. We are painted as the first one who's going to steal something amongst a group of group. See, when America opens its arms to you and lets you on in, you better know that it can switch really quick. So now he's arrested for the murder of his former wife, Nicole Brown, formerly Simpson. And the friend, which is a boyfriend, why don't they say, boy? look, it was black women, lover, not friend. Don't minimize what it is. Now, she had the right to do what she wanted to do. She was divorced from OJ, right? She can do what she wants to do, right? But you see, when I, when I see this scenario and how it's set up, I think about Emmett Till, who was accused of making a pass at a white woman. I believe he was 14 years old. And he had either a hearing a disability, but he would whistle as a means of communicating. And so now, this white woman now is so insane because you see, taboo is that black men are not supposed to even look at the hem of a long skirt on a white woman. Tell me I'm wrong. 
all of these factors come to play when you see the explosiveness of what happened after OJ was a court of all charges. OJ Simpson in a knit cap from two blocks away is still OJ Simpson. It's no disguise. It's no disguise. It makes no sense. It doesn't fit. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Ooh, so many people, when they heard those words, they felt like they were stabbed too. That anger. Oh, I'm so glad we didn't have social media back then like we do now. There were, there were uh, uh, message boards and basic things, and I'm quite sure things spilled over onto those mediums. But, oh, boy, if you had it now, most of the, so the platforms would be, people's pages would be taken down for hate speech. And still they're going to make up troll accounts to do so. But me having this show speaking frankly about these things, or it's hate speech. So download it while you can as soon as it's over. They love to come at me. But I'm the one who comes to the family dinner of a dysfunctional family and asks questions that makes the family feel, feel uneasy. The family secrets that they know about, but they don't talk about. And if you don't talk about it, how are you going to heal it? America, if you don't talk about your past sins, your guilt, sense of entitlement, how are you going to heal you don't want to heal because you don't want to acknowledge the things that have been done again this is not to say he did it and this is not to say he didn't do it i have my own personal feelings about it and if you go to landscurve.com and click on the entry for this particular video we will discuss it in the comments section okay it'll be right there and subscribe while you can through email to the blog. But black men were prohibited from looking at the slave master's wife. So when Jack Johnson came along and became the heavyweight champion of the world in the early 1900s, do you know what it was like? We're not even talking about the time of Muhammad Ali when he came through and announced to the world that he is Muhammad Ali and he is a black Muslim. The time of civil rights. Robert shot. John F. Kennedy getting shot and killed. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, his friend. We're going back. Jack Johnson up in front of all of these countless thousands of White men wanted to see him lose to a white man and he just mercilessly beat them down and left in an expensive luxury car with two white women. I think he married one or two of them. Letting them know it ain't going to be what I'm going to be with tonight. It's going to be two. And I'm the champion and I whipped your boy. Oh, they wanted to kill him. I just think it's a, they didn't. That's a fascinating story. And while I love my sisters and will always desire to be with them if I was a single man, I can understand that him walking with one or two or three white women was the ultimate way of putting up his middle finger to white America. And that was the ultimate F you. Not only am I the champion, not only am I, but your woman likes me and wants me and going to do all kinds of me tonight. Ooh. <laughs> Remember that SWV song, Can We Get Freaky Tonight? I just thought I'd throw that one in. So I understand. So that was the old fear of the white man. The big black penis. So how much could white America now embrace O.J. Simpson as they treated him nice? Weren't they thinking about what might happen at night when they go to bed? They can bear it a little easier because the man is making money and, and he's not like the rest of them. But I just can't understand. I just can't take it. But not only is he doing that, they arrest him 
for the murder of Nicole Brown, formerly Simpson. You mean not only do we have to deal with the thoughts of her impaling herself on, on that black turgid vein lace staff of life and enjoying it? We already got the envy for the organ. Now you're going to go ahead and delete her? You know, you can't say K-I-L-L. -L. You have to say delete now or snuff. You snuffer? Oh, no. So now all of the things that were held back, like the water at the dam of Niagara Falls, the dam broke. And everything at the bottom, just like the old Dan and yogurt, you had to stir it up to see what flavor was if you lost the lid. If you lost the lid, you bought some Dan and yogurt and had it in your refrigerator, you didn't know. If it was boysenberry, berry, strawberry, raspberry, banana, you had to start and taste it to see what it was. Is OJF going to stir up something from the that really shouldn't be that way? Or really shouldn't be there. But we know it's there. Because I asked the question that we all know the answer of, but is America's venom still alive? Just because we have more interracial relationships across the land, does that mean it's gone? It may sway one way in public, but behind closed doors and in the hearts of so-called main America, I feel and I believe it's still the same. Why? Because I've tasted the racism just being who I am. But it's funny how fickle America can be. Let's go back two years after the OJ trial. And let's take it to 1997. Let's take it to the rematch of Evander Holyfield and Mike Tyson. When Mike Tyson bit the ear off of Evander Holyfield and went and turned around and bit the other ear. Same people who despised O.J. Simpson for allegedly snuffing and deleting the coal brown system, even a uh, uh, Simpson system, I was going to say the word system, even though in their courts he was acquitted. But in their heart, he violated, not only because they thought that he snuffed her, because he was laying in the bed with her. I don't know what the man has between his legs, what he had. I don't really care. I don't get down like that. But there are a lot of people out there who are fantasizing, not in a good way, but in a way of terror. Oh, I could imagine what he's doing to her. And I know that she may have been disowned by the people in her own circles because they don't do that. This is why that is so still taboo. When you look at the porn industry, I have to bring this up. I've talked to many people, top level porn actresses. I got around in my 61 years. And I tell you this, there is a fascination with interracial porn. The black men who are fascinated with this, I don't think so. Because I know, and I'm going to reveal this, coming up as an amateur bodybuilder, won the natural Teenage Mr. America in 1982. It's on my site. You'll see the picture. So what? Something I can put up on my mantle when I'm 85, 90 years old and say I did it. Something I did. But guess what? Many times at those competitions, you had people who were in the audience, the spectators, and they would find you after the competition in the parking lot or in front of the venue where we often took pictures and we had photo shoots, brief photo shoots with different magazines. And you'd have a sheepish white couple standing nearby. I know that many of you don't want to hear this, but I'm going to tell this because this is the real deal. 
There wasn't a competition that I went to where I wasn't approached by two or three different seemingly shy white couples and they wanted me to bed down the wife. Man manipulated himself. This is the late 70s and the early 80s and beyond. Many of you are now hip to how the world works. The very people that they're fascinated with in the bed. And as far as their sexuality, they despise them in public. They don't have for you, brother. You shouldn't be looking for a job on them anyway. We should be showing unity, which we don't show with each other and doing our own thing to serve the needs of our own community. But when you go to a job in one of their companies, they don't have a job for you, but they'll pay you a little bit of money to go home and do something with their wife. That's what I know. You want to hate on us, but you fantasize about us. And half the time, I'm going to tell you the truth. I ain't do it. But in their offer to me, they said, well, I just want to let you know you can have her any which way you want. But I, 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 I just want to, let's say in a decent way, perform a little bit of act on you. That's a whole different subject. I'm just telling you how deep this thing goes. Because many of us as black men in this world, and especially in America, we are in a mentally and emotionally and spiritually downtrodden state, and we don't know who we are. Again, it's not to say that he's innocent or didn't do it. I'm just telling you what's at the bottom of that yogurt cup. What the flavor is of America. See, I haunt many people because I survived it. Like a former inmate may say he survived so many decades in the penitentiary. I survived many decades in America and I'm out of it now. Of course, you know, I live in West Africa, in Ghana. And so from way over across the little lake called the Atlantic Ocean, I can still talk about the experiences that are embedded in my soul. Now, how dare you now want to come back now with the venom I know is there? Mike Tyson bit Vander Holyfield's ear and you relegated him to the same hate that you give OJ. But guess what? Now Mike Tyson has gone through different things and matured. And even when he bit the ear, me being a big box fan, it wasn't just about boxing. He was raised in Brooklyn. I was raised in Queens. My circumstances weren't as unfortunate as his, but I still identified with him. I understood his pain. And I stood up for him. There was one woman when I was in my driving Miss Daisy stage. I drove a Lincoln Town car for a corporate company and had to be suited up every single day. Very nice Lincoln Town car I had. And there was a woman who got in the back, Caucasian woman. And she jumped when she sat in the back. Because from the side, you know, I had my head shaved. And, you know, she said, oh, my God, it was low. I thought it was Mike Tyson. And so I had a deadpan look on my face because I didn't know where that comment was coming from. And when you drive on that. Not to start the conversation. You you you, you can continue it along. You don't have to be blasting music. They may want to sit back there and read something or meditate or stay on their phone. But she continued the conversation. She said, isn't Mike Tyson a monster? He's the lowest of the low. He is a pe I couldn't even repeat right now what, I, what she said. But I could have said that for her forebearers. We could have went tit for tat for the generations of 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 the stealing of wealth and free labor and land that put her probably in that advantageous position. I could have said that, but we know that. I didn't say that at all. But I did say that there's more to him than meets the eye and in years to come, you'll see. Do you know that woman reported me? She brought up the conversation and she was mad at my response. 
because I didn't. He, 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 yeah, yeah. Hey, he, he, Miss Ann, he, 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 he a monster. I never do nothing like that. Although they think that we all want them, and they get mad when we don't. They get mad when we adore our sisters. When we treat our sisters with respect, when we treat them as they deserve, even sometimes when they don't deserve it, we got to look past the circumstances, people. We got to look at why the OJ trial brought so much of a reaction. And maybe it's painful. I played it at the beginning. I'm going to play it right now again. Let's revisit that time. All right, Mr. Car Mr. Uh, Simpson, would you please stand and face the jury? Mrs. Robertson. Superior Court of California, County of Los Angeles. In the matter of the people of the state of California versus Orenthal James Simpson, case number BA097211. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant or Orenthal James Simpson not guilty of the crime of murder in violation of Penal Code Section 187A, a felony upon Nicole Brown Simpson, a human being, as charged in count one of the information. Superior Court of the State of California, County of Los Angeles, in the matter of the people of the State of California versus Orenthal James Simpson. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder in violation of Penal Code Section 187A, a felony upon Ronald Lyle Goldman, a human being, as charged in count two of the information. O.J. Simpson, in a knit cap, from two blocks away. It's still O.J. Simpson. It's no disguise. It's no disguise. It makes no sense. It doesn't fit. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Like I said, Mike Tyson is revered as one of the deepest human beings on the planet, full of wisdom because of the things that he went through. So you can't judge or assess a book by its cover. That goes for all of us. I can't wait to really see the responses on the death of OJ Simpson. Like with anybody else, we make mistakes, we make misjudgments. It's not for me to know exactly what's in every woman and every man's heart. We can only hope that we made peace and made amends with the one who created us. Whatever your belief system is, it all comes down to the same thing. Hopefully what we've done wrong is outweighed by the things that we've done right. Hopefully, America can come to grips with the sludge that's at the bottom of the tank that it doesn't want to acknowledge, but it quickly comes out in acts and things done to us that they just justify, not just once or twice, but for hundreds of years. You see, the funny part about it is you know, OJ really never embraced us, but he was still a brother. And when that trial happened and the acquittal came, we cheered. We didn't just cheer white America because we thought he did or didn't do it. We cheered because we had been used to being deemed guilty and it might be a bad thing to say but at that particular point it didn't matter we had a time when in your courts you couldn't say a damn thing because we were acquitted and we think back to many of our family members who were thrown in jail and had drugs placed on them we think back to our brothers and sisters who were raped on the plantation because we were looked at as property. Slave from can't see morning to can't see night. All of the injustices, every step of the way, it's almost like the song that Ice Cube made, Today Was a Good Day. We go out to these jobs every single day and we know the looks we know the slights and the Colgate smiles that don't mean anything at all because we've become 
specialists on your sickness. We've become specialists on your dysfunctions. We've become specialists on the minefield of traps that you set in front of us every day, whether we're on the job, whether we're at home, whether we're just walking the street or we're in Walmart or Target or Home Depot or Lowe's or the shopping mall, we know it can happen anytime. Well, all of a sudden we are guilty and they ain't trying to prove us innocent. Many felt that way. Most of us would not be happy at the death of anyone that would be sick. And if someone told me that they were happy, that M Nicole Brown Simpson, formerly Simpson, was murdered, I would say, why would you be happy about that? She may be the descendant of the people who didn't do us too good. But we're a forgiving people. We're a just people. When in not a heightened state, but even in our normal state, after all we've been through, we would not call for the death of someone who didn't deserve it. But you got to understand that that's the difference between most of you and most of us. And there's some of us now who are coming up like beasts because we were raised in this place called America, often time spelled with three Ks and not a C. And so if you put somebody who is scrubbed down and manicured and pedicured and, you know, got the wax job and a nice outfit on and cologne or perfume, and you dump them in a garbage can for a couple of hundred years, they're going to come out smelling like that garbage can now, wouldn't they? They're going to come out stinking. So if we are a reflection of you and what you taught us, all it means is that you did a really good job. For those of us who are holding on to our sanity while being treated below par in a society that will just never seem to stop assessing us the wrong way. Some of us, like myself, are tired of it. I wanted to come back home. I never felt like I was at home in America. I had a nice home and a nice family and a nice upbringing. And that's the only thing that protected me before going out to the battlefield as I got older and was looked at as a threat. But many don't know that. We have many who look like me who come from the Caribbean, come from the motherland, come from other places to America and say, ho, 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 Lance, it is not that bad. These people treat me so nicely. It's because you don't know their dirt and you haven't come up with them. But when you get your ninja wake up call, you'll quickly understand. Again, am I accusing everyone who looks like that to be that way? No, but it's not my job. And we get it so much, you got to understand why so many of us secretly say, I wouldn't be surprised if they were. I'll treat them nice for when they treat me nice, but I'm ready to get that wake up call from this one or that one. It takes a very special person to endure and show that their heart is clean. Many will come to you in whispers and say, it was wrong what happened to Trayvon Martin. It was wrong what happened to Michael Brown. But they won't go home at their own dinner table and say that. They won't go in the break room when we're not there and say that. And if they join us in a protest, they got the big sign to hide behind and the big glasses because they don't want to be labeled a ninja lover. So long after the trial, and now as the time goes on that O.J. Simpson will never see April 11th today because he transitioned yesterday, the 12th, the 13th, the 14th, all of us are going to have to face 
what's in our heart. We can deceive the world. We can say that we're clean. Oftentimes we work hard on the facade, hard to look like the real thing instead of turning the mirror in on ourselves and being the real thing. That's the game we play in this short life. But just like that thief who tried to walk out of that department store in the shopping mall, he gets caught at the door and has to reveal everything in his pockets. That shows that he's a thief. So for whatever it is that you are hiding, whether it's what I said or not, if you're not that way, then this is not for you. But OJ, we'll never know whether he did or didn't. We weren't there. We know what the court said, but we know what's in your heart because you displayed it prominently. Angry, mad, and pissed. Friendships broken up. Marriages broken up. Neighbors fighting. Could you imagine if we had smartphones back in those days? Oh, but then... We may not have to wonder now because this happened is going to stir up what's at the bottom. Is America's venom still alive? O.J. Simpson is now the nation's official litmus test of racism. Oh, how I wish brother Paul Mooney was alive. I would love to hear his take on this right now. Because you know he would tell it like it is. I would love to hear it. I would not even try to replicate what I think he would say. I'll share that with private friends. A few friends already know. I'm going to call them after this. No, I can't right now. But later on, we will talk about it. And there's so much more that I have to say about this issue. But I think you pretty much got the brunt of it. You let us in your world and we're supposed to perform a certain way. You don't like these types of unions. Lots of times when you get with somebody, get with meaning you date someone of the other race, you get engaged to the person of the other race, you court them and marry them. Somebody is leaving their culture at the door. You can't vibrate all the way now and say what you want and be with this person because there's no overlap much more than what you say is love, but a whole lot of sexual energy going on because of a fetish that you want to explore. I've seen it time and time again. I'm not saying it's going to be that way all the time. Maybe we can move on. But have we really grown as a people? United States of America? United States? We united? We weren't united back then. And from what I can see, we're not united now. now no, matter how, no matter how many coalitions we join on to, no matter how many groups that we join and say, we're going to hold hands at this the churches, the fake smiles. But can you really do some internal, mental, emotional, and spiritual house cleaning to present yourself to your creator? No matter what virgin or spiritual belief, it all comes down to being the same. Did you accumulate toxic ways on this planet? that were already here waiting for you, or have you remained as innocent as a child? That's your own personal battle, and that's my own personal battle, and I know I have a lot of things that I have to work on. And time is running down, because if I live twice of 61, I'll be 122. And although I would like to live a long, long life, I don't think I'll look too pretty at that age, and I know that chances are, a little bit before then, I'll be gone. And since I know that my time at the dance might not be super long, I'm doing everything I can to keep it prolonged. I'm going to make sure to dance every dance and enjoy every bit of music. But not only that, I am not going to lie to you. I'm not going to hate you, but I'm not going to lie to you. The bottom line, we have some things to think about. And I want you to think about the comments. I want you to think about what's said. I want you to ask yourself, even though OJ is dead, is America's venom still alive? And for many of us, I think you know the answer to that. This is not going to be long. I'm going to wrap it down right here. And I just want to say much love to you all. 
go to landscurve.com and leave your comments. You can leave whatever comments you want. You can say whatever you want. I'm not taking one comment down. Much love to you all. I hope you enjoyed this. Let's continue the discussion there. Peace. OJ Simpson in a knit cap from two blocks away is still OJ Simpson. It's no disguise. It's no disguise. It makes no sense. It doesn't fit. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. All right, Mr. Car Mr. Uh, Simpson, would you please stand and face the jury? This is Robertson. Superior Court of California, County of Los Angeles, in the matter of the people of the state of California versus Orenthal James Simpson, case number BA097211. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant or Orenthal James Simpson not guilty of the crime of murder in violation of Penal Code Section 187A, a felony upon Nicole Brown Simpson, a human being, as charged in count one of the information. Superior Court of the State of California, County of Los Angeles, in the matter of the people of the State of California versus Orenthal James Simpson. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder in violation of Penal Code Section 187A, a felony upon Ronald Lyle Goldman, a human being, as charged in count two of the information. Welcome to the mind of Lance Curve, the most creatively profound man in cyberspace. Make sure to go to lancecurve.com, an online magazine established in 2001, containing written articles, thousands of talk shows and discussions, cutting edge cartoons, as well as erotic expressions and tasteful adult photography. It's definitely not for the faint of heart. Once you get a taste of the world of Lance Curve, trust me, you'll be back for more. LanceGurve.com. Bold, raw, and uncut. <laughs>